My hair is extra fluffy today. Fluffy well, maybe hair. you should cut it then. Maybe you should maybe you should shave your head completely and then just leave your beard. No, no. If I'm if I'm shaving my head, I'm I'm shaving. You're shaving I'm, all of it? I'm going alopecia. Um get some nair and just bathe in nair. And that'll be our intro to this episode of I think everyone Hairless should Monkey leave Fighters. a comment on how they love Loki's fluffy hair. It's fluffy. It's extra fluffy. Or like, someone should leave a comment. Maybe if we get to so like a, a million like, subscribers, we bathe Logi in Nair. Or, yeah, Logi. Oh, God. Logi Nair? in Nair. No, that's not. Uh, yeah, you have no idea. How, like, that's chemical burn hair off. I mean, I know I just said it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not doing that. I will. I will. Well, we'll, we'll Steve Carell him and wax his body. Mm. So that he's completely he's completely bald everywhere. I'm not I'm not gonna scream Kelly Clarkson. But million not subscribers. Even to, to millions of mil, million subscribers. The beard, the hair, it'll all go away. Eyebrows are gonna stay because I don't know if they'll grow back. <laughs> I, I think eyebrows do grow back, but it is it's I true that it it might be patchy if they do grow back. But it'd be like a fresh start, you know, where, you know, people do the, uh, what is it? The cleanse, the health cleanse for their body to purify it and, you know, release it of all the negative. Are you saying saying that my, my, my hair is, is toxic and needs to be purged? You need to detox your hair. I need to detox my body because it's too airy. you You need to detox, but maybe it's like that where you have the detox and it allows your hair to grow back fresher and cleaner and nicer I'm, less product I, that it goes in your hair from I'm, whatever I'm, you put in your hair I don't use a ton of I've never used a ton of product in my hair so and the older I get the less of it there is so the chances of it growing back because of shaving it are probably is that, not is there true. a place I could buy some beets there is if you there. go if you go there. back to your cult was it just from your god? And you go up and to the left. Oh yeah, the little shrimp dude. Yeah. The, shrimp but he guy. gives me seeds though, right? Well he gives you the seeds, which you'd plant, which I think you're already planting seeds. Maybe I just need to wait for them to grow, me. yeah. Beetroot. Cause wanna, that's oh, that's what I wanna get that feast before it runs out. Yeah, I think that was the last thing that we had done last time, which was you planted beets, seeds. And so now you just have to wait it? for them to grow. No, it feels like it's been about 14 years since we played this last. So I've got angry old man story. L- Loki's gripes about Ooh, the world. Okay. Angry Loki's old man story. Loki's gripes of the world. Loki's, Loki complains. Loki's Kicking. get off my lawn story. Hey, you darn kids get off my lawn. I mean, it's about that. It's so walking my dog this morning, as I do every day. Okay. Um, and one of the neighbor's dogs uh, is just wandering the neighborhood and is very aggressive. And like by itself? Like by itself. Okay. And I noticed it didn't have a uh, collar on it. And I know the dog. I know the dog better than I want to know this dog. <laughs> um, okay. It, it, it escapes. And so usually it's just, you know, you, you just point and say, hey, go back home. And the dog like goes back home. And like, and it used to like jump into my backyard and it was always trying to kind of be submissive and trying to like fit into the pack like the way dogs do. And it was just behaving like a dog. And so, you know, you treat it the way you would a dog and you're fine but today it was like out for blood like it was my my corgi is smaller than it not by much but smaller and it, i think it was looking for a snack and <laughs> okay. yeah it was one of those like standoff with the dog kind of things um and i've suspected for a while that the owners of this dog have just let it go like they're just whatever it's done because that's right. kind of how they operate so when I saw it without a, a collar, I figured that's what's going on. I actually called animal control and hopefully the dog finds a home that is better suited for it than where it used to live. Yeah. But I say, and I, I say that because this is the MO of these, these neighbors. 
they've done this with like they've they've been through since they've lived here. I think they've been through like four dogs and at least one cat. And with the cat, the cat got pregnant, and they're like, "We're not dealing with this." So they just let let it go outside, and then we just had feral cats throughout the neighborhood. Right. And it actually led to the year of my wife trapping cats because there were just feral, demented cats attacking. Like there were some of them that they'd be in the, the trap. You know, they're, they're, it's a live trap, and then animal control comes in and takes them away. Right. But you're like uh, the cat. Usually, a cat would be either scared and trying to get out of the trap or be meowing you know some some way some of these cats just looked off and just like sat there and stared at you weird like <laughs> i don't feel i don't feel comfortable right now so yeah but that's so what they've like done pet dogs too. so yeah i mean that's kind of what it was it was like these creepy things but I'm walking my dog around and I, you know i'm getting attacked i didn't get attacked i didn't get bit but the dog was, you know, w- was it, it was itching for a fight, mm-hmm. and I just I just don't like people who they, they they've got that mo like you get a dog they get a dog they have it for like a year or so then they get another dog and then the old dog just kind of it's like it's not the new toy anymore so they just like let it go away. Like, yeah, they just stop taking care of it and leave the gate open, kind of a thing. And just yeah. like, just don't, just don't get a dog. You you shouldn't have animals. Like I shouldn't have to call animal control to come take care of your dog. I should be able to call animal control to come take care of you. <laughs> you know, it's, so this is kind of, of course, promoting specific channels. But the channels that do like the wholesome animal rescue type thing where they find animals that have been in abusive situations or on the side of roads or whatever, and then they take them, clean them up, and then they find them forever homes. Those are types of people or channels that do give me help in humanity. Like we're not all just basically assholes to animals, basically. Because I... It just, it just sucks, you know. I think it just last night, um, probably about one or two in the morning, that I, I'm, I'm hearing this meow outside, and it's a, it's a loud meow, and I'm just, I'm trying to find it from my window, just trying to see where it's at, if it's, because there, I live in a, a complex that there are people who do have animals. So I was unsure if it was just like coming from an apartment that was near me or like someone had a window open, even though it was like freezing cold outside. I don't know. But I just glanced across the way and I see this cat and I'm just thinking, okay, who is the who is the asshole who's just like, I'm going to leave my cat outside in, you know, freezing temperature. And then I realized like this cat's having a a territorial dispute with another cat. And I'm just oh, yeah. thinking, like, come on, people. It's and if it was if it was warmer weather, I would be less angry about it. Like, I still think it's a, a shitty behavior to do, but it's warmer weather. You know, I'm I'm less Whoa, spike. concerned about an animal freezing to death, effectively. But now that there was yeah. two out there, it's like, come on, people. Do better. Well, and that's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's cats. And that's how a lot of people treat cats as well as they just, they come and go. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've heard that story from, it was a local DJ where he, his cat kept getting fat and fat and fat and he kept taking it to the vet and they're like, your cat's still gaining weight and we need to put on restrictive diets and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And one day he's out there looking for his cat because it's been out wandering around and he's trying to give it food. And his neighbor comes over all pissed off. Like, what are you doing with my cat? And he's like... What are you talking about? This is my cat. Like the <laughs> collar on it has my contact information. Yeah. It's microchips to my name. Like what's going on? He's like, oh, we've been feeding this cat for like the last year because it just comes over and is hungry. <laughs> and he's going, my cat keeps getting fat because the neighbors are feeding it. But so am I because the cat's going around getting extra food. Yeah. It just. And and your your story about the people who like this cat's pregnant. I'm not gonna deal with this. So out into the wild you go. I, 
Yeah. That. That's mm -hmm. unacceptable behavior. Because it's one of the reasons why, like I've always talked about, I live in an apartment and I could have an animal, but I know that I do not have the capability right now to take care of said animal. Whether it's a cat, oh, yeah. I, I, whether it's a dog, whether it's a rabbit or a tiny little gecko thing. <laughs> like I know that at this moment, I do not have the capability of taking care of that animal. And so I don't have one, even though I do want one. I just know that I can't. And that was always the approach that I took. Like I can't, can't take care of an animal, so I don't have one. And the thing is with, like with my neighbors, they can, they have every capability. Well, of doing clearly it. they think that it's they just, want to, and then the year's up and well, they realize they don't want that animal anymore and they want a new no, one. No, I think, I think what, what they, yeah, that's the thing is they want a new one. And cause it's not like they're, they're rescuing new animals. It's they're, they're getting like purebred, you know, and it's like, oh, Hey, I want to get a new breed of dog so i go out and get that new breed of dog Does that need to be or... the new animal ownership strategy just lease them and trade it in for a new model just lease them that's not a bad idea well i i actually the think it would concept, be a bad idea because right? imagine it from the animal's mm -hmm. perspective i'm sure it's kind of a traumatic experience better. for the animal to get used to i think it'd be better for the animal than what's going on now where it's just like all right we're gonna take your well, no, no, no. like the, the, we're just gonna we can't abandon keep you, you in the yard because yeah no 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 yeah it's it's a better situation than what they're living in but for an animal to constantly so be changing two evils, homes, right? yeah yeah well it, like especially with cats because the thing that that with, with cats oh, no. a lot of times people just take them out into the woods and just drop them yeah. off yeah and then they decimate bird populations or they just die so. because they don't know how to take care of themselves. Oh no, they don't. They 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 figure it out pretty quick. I had a teacher in high school who he hated cats and he tortured cats. He, you know, probably should be in jail for just some of the stories he told high school students, whether they were actually true or not. Like, um, but he was hunting and he would always shoot cats out in the wild just because he hated them. And he was doing it because he hated them. But he shot a cat. Fish and game guy pulls up right after him. Like he he just did. It. He's like, well, crap. I guess I'm all right. My my evil doing is finally catching up to me. And the part the, the fish and game guy was like, oh no, shoot every cat you see out here because they murder birds. People just come out. They have kittens. They've let all the kittens out. The kittens figure out how to survive, and they just murder birds. And it's they're an invasive species effectively are so, you guys having fun listening to our conversations our no, yeah. tragic sad conversations about animals audience well and the thing is like the, the dog yeah. i have now the the corgi that i have isn't necessarily a rescue she's a rehome because the person who had her couldn't take care of her wanted to but was in a situation where he couldn't continue to take care of her so he found a home yeah. for her like it's the dog I had before was a, was a similar situation. Yeah, that um, was something that I saw recently um, with where we're at and the animal shelters around um, us is that a lot of shelters have gotten full because people are surrendering them to the shelters because they don't have a stable living environment to where they know yeah. that they're not gonna be able to take care of the animal if something happens, whether they lose their home, lose their job, lose whatever. Whoa. And so they surrender them to the shelters because of that. And- well, Or there's also a big factor too, where, cause I was looking for a dog through COVID yeah. lockdowns. So I was keeping an eye on shelters and dogs were hard to come by in shelters. Like there weren't animals in shelters. There were cats, yeah. plenty of cats. Cause to be honest- Cats, cats are assholes. Dumb. Um, I just well, in general, people tend to get rid of cats, or or they get too many of them and can't yeah. take care of them. <laughs> Those kinds of situations, you know, dogs are are different anyway. Um, but I think there's a lot of people now who are just like, oh, I didn't realize what taking care of an animal entailed. <laughs> and yeah, so, I think it's yeah. a mix. But I know that one of the reasons why there was a lot of animals that were rescue from shelters during COVID was because people wanted companionship that they couldn't have because they were forced yeah. into lockdown. And so they looked for companionship with an animal, whether it was a dog, whether it was a cat or, you know, anything 
in between those, you know, people were looking for that type of companionship. You know, I, I wanted to play a game today um, in between all of the work that I do. Um, and I got looking through my games library and was like, ah, oh, there's not a whole lot. Let me check out what I've got on Epic because I've got games on Epic. I've got a bunch of free games I've picked up over the years. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's there. And one of them was Star Wars Squadrons. And I was like, oh, that's great. I'll play that. And I clicked install and tried to launch EA. And I'm like, why? Why Why all the game launchers? I mean, I get that the, you guys, it's the marketplace and everybody's making money off of it and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, why can I buy an EA game on Epic that I then have to launch through? I have to link my accounts together and launch between them. Like, just. Yeah. I got 15 different game launchers up now. <laughs> Well, and then it breaks, and I think it's something else because, like, the login window came up on my main monitor, but the error came up on my secondary monitor. It yeah, Loki's there's old a old man complaints. That's what this episode is. Old man complaints. And Nair, whatever the opening was. Yeah, there's a there's a game that I have that I keep looking at, thinking like I'll eventually play that again. But then I also get into the hope that maybe they'll remaster it because it's an older game and it should deserve a remaster. But then I look up online, people are like, it won't get remastered because it's on a different engine than it is now. So it just require a remake altogether. Yeah. And I just think, come on. I, I saw a rumor, a leak, and the, the story started out with, we think this is true because the leakers who leaked this leaked this other thing that ended up being true. And it's like, okay, but have they leaked things that never came out to being true? <laughs> but it talked about remakes of uh, Metal Gear, all the Metal Gear Solid games. Right. On, onto an updated engine. It was like, I mean, that seemed like the plan that they were doing with Metal Gear Solid 5 seven years ago, eight years ago. Right. Like, and but, then just never did but, it. But they didn't, and they didn't even finish Metal Gear Solid Five, and they fired, you know, Konami fired Hideo Kojima, and yeah, yeah. So you're kind of like, I don't, eh. I've been around enough to know not to, not to trust things until they are actually there. Yeah, so. well, and it just makes sense because this series is an older series. And so it's like, all what right. What series is it? Is it a secret series? Is it? No, like no, it's it's not a secret. Leisure Suit Larry. What series? Because, <laughs> yeah. I was is gonna it Leisure say. Suit Larry, and you're just ashamed of the fact. No, I, I, I can't may know which one you're talking about. I can't yeah. talk. I can't it's, talk it's, about it's, it. It's, it's Custer's it's, Revenge it's, from the Atari 2600. It's too embarrassing. I can't talk about it. Atari. No, the it's the Dragon Age series. Oh yeah, I actually looked at that today. I have Dragon Age Origins and. I think EA. Yeah, well, because you talked about EA, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that Dragon Age was a yeah. EA game. Um, but... I've heard, I think that it wasn't necessarily going to be remakes. It was going to be... No, actually, it was rem remix of that. Um, or it was just going to be, like, a new entry. Well, people, people wanted it to be remade because there was the... Oh, I can't... There's another game that was made by the same company that got remastered. And so they yeah. thought that because Dragon Age, like four, was coming out at some point soon, what? that they would do a rem uh, like remastered remake of the first three in the series. And I thought, oh, that'd be great because I have both Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Two um, for PC on the disc. Way back in the day, where you actually had to plug in discs for your games. Anyone out there who's who's a youngster, but it, it's older it's graphics. It's funny when people are like, these kids don't know what CDs are. And I was like, you know what? When I was a kid, like records and vinyl were out of fashion, right? And cassettes were the big thing. And then CDs became the big thing. It's like, I still knew what the old technology yeah. was. I still. No, no, I'm just saying it because that's that's the added joke. Ooh, I'm stuck. Yeah. Once you reach a certain age, you don't know what anything before that was. But I mean, and there are certainly those people who don't know things like no. I've heard. Oh no, oh, Nucky goes died. down. He was martyred. I mean, it, this is ten years ago or more, longer, more than ten years ago. The uh, lady I worked with talked about. She said, "Hey, can you grab my telephone?" And our kids didn't know what a telephone was because mm. they'd only ever had cell phones. Yeah. So, like my kids, the first time they saw a cable TV and saw commercials, they were like, "What is this? This is amazing!" Yeah. Like, 
what are the, like your toys that do all these things? And I was like, oh, right, you kids have never seen commercials because you grew up on Netflix and on on basically anything digital that's anything, not yeah. ad based cable. Yeah. Um, but no, just with Dragon Age, though, it was like, oh, OK, like maybe they'll remaster it and it'll be better graphics instead of some of like the old janky graphics that is in the game. But from what I've read and from what people have said, that the only way that they could do any remaster for it would be ah. to completely remake the game just because it's, it's on a of, different engine that isn't made anymore or, um, anymore or something. Because GoldenEye just came out on the Switch, yes. on the virtual console. Well, on Switch and um, Xbox. Um, Oh, I can't. It's like except something Xbox. Did it? The the, the, the Xbox. The good. Anyway, yeah. the Game Pass or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I tried to play it on the Switch. Uh huh. Um, and to be fair, I only tried this for you know maybe ten minutes before I just gave up and said, "All right, I'm done with this." Um, you need to update the controls on that for the Switch, Nintendo, because um, I know this Nintendo 64 was unique, but. Um, the only control schemes that I could find to like basic look around, mm -hmm. like the left stick up and down, either looked you up, look, looked your head up and down, and the right stick looked left and right, or the opposite. Oh no, Charlie, the bunny has no, died. The left of old age. Oh no, didn't he already die of old age a while ago? We've had we have beat so many old people at this point boot? that just like you start like, murdering. Just people. murdered two of them. Get to murder and more of them. Yeah. Send them out. On, oh, you can't. You can't send them out on pilgrimages. That's right. Yeah. I remember old people, you can't. Stuff. I'm sure. This, we'll do this one, I guess. Can you just? Can you just sell them to like that spider dude? But no, seriously. Like I, I tried to find a control scheme where I could just like walk. Mm. And because what it used to be was the way that I because and we figured this out with the Nintendo is you switched it to the C buttons for moving forward and down and then strafing left yeah, and right. Yeah. And then you could use the joystick on your left hand to look yeah. around. Yeah, I couldn't even because the, the, the C buttons are the right joystick on the switch controller. And so it's just like, can we just just fix this? Just make it so I can walk mm -hmm. like I don't have to use two actions to minute like uh, just stop. It's just bad, and I was like, "All right, do the body pit." Nostalgia. T t ten minutes of ten minutes of trying to figure this out. Scratch that nostalgia itch. I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, I, I had that thought. I was thinking, well, if any of us have access to, I guess, like the Xbox Game Pass or whatever it is that um, GoldenEye was released on, or you know, whatever. Like, do we want to play for the no, channel? Because while I have, there's a, certain things that I think should stay in the in the nostalgia yeah. they get they get ruined is, is that you come back yeah. well because i was gonna say like as i have a nintendo 64 it's like old graphics so we would have to figure out a way to somehow upscale it to fit and have viewable quality in gameplay uh we so. just yeah there's other ways to do that but i don't want to I, I don't want to i don't want to do that kind of stuff Sorry, audience. Even if you vote, even for, if you it, vote for it, I don't want to. I don't want to torture myself for your pleasure. I will torture other people for your pleasure, but not myself. Uh, also, Loki's quick and dirty review of basically the tutorial of, of uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Um, it really felt like Disneyland ride because a lot of the Disneyland rides now are kind of games, like especially the Star Wars stuff. Right. Like it, it felt more like, and to be fair, it was a tutorial, but it, it really, I, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if I'll go back or not. That's all I'm going to say. You don't know I, if you go I back and play it, or you don't know if you go back to Disneyland? Oh, I'm going to go back to Disneyland. Um, I'll go back to Disneyland, for sure, but I don't know if I'm going to go back to the game. I might give it up. Maybe, maybe another chance? I don't know. I My expectations were more like the old... Again, talking about old games, the old uh, X-Wing games like X-Wing Alliance and this didn't, this felt more arcadey and less like, I don't know, just didn't feel as in-depth. So, so, 
the only the only, let's say I have to make sure. Yeah, I think the only two Star Wars games that I have ever played is the Star Wars Phantom Menace and the Star Wars Racers. Those are the only I, two that I've played. I think was the Phantom Menace the one on the PlayStation. Well, it was on PlayStation, but it was also on PC. Yeah. So I think I. I think I rented that on PlayStation when it came out and somehow glitched through a door and couldn't progress and couldn't uh -huh. reload. I, like that was the last save point. So I was like, well, guess I'm done playing this. <laughs> it was like the first yeah, level. That. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a couple of amazing glitches that you can. Re I shouldn't say glitches because I know that they're kind of programmed into the game, <laughs> but there's a but I'd say glitching through a door and not being able to progress is, is a glitch. It's no, not. no, I, I understand because I've, I've <laughs> if hit If that those... was programmed in, though, that would be a uh, dick move. <laughs> yeah, I, I've hit glitches where things are supposed to happen and then they don't happen. And so you're frozen waiting for them yeah. to happen. But because they don't happen, you're just stuck there. Uh, now, there's a there's a part um, when you're on um, when you're trying to recruit Anakin, you're trying to help him with like speed racing and like Boba Fett and his, or, uh... Jabba the Hutt. No, no, it's a, Jabba the Hutt, but the, the flying dude, like the little alien that owns Anakin. I just forgot his name. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know his name. But if you kill people, just go on a, I don't know, a murdering spree, uh, you'll eventually reach a point where you can't progress in the game because it's like, I don't help murderers, blah, blah, blah. I won't help you. She's like, uh, okay, well, I know that you're not supposed to kill people, but when you're a kid and you just want to, you know, kill people in a game, it, it kind of oh, hinders okay. you from yeah, progressing. I'm, well, that's a valuable lesson. You shouldn't murder to progress in life. I know. I understand <laughs> it's a valuable lesson, but it is just... It's that. And... I can't remember what it is that I've watched recently, but every time I hear it, it reminds me of a line in the game where you're trying to escort the queen and she always keeps saying like, don't worry about me, I'll keep up. It's the most annoying line ever because she gets stuck on everything uh -huh. to where you have to keep running back to her, but then she yells at you, but like, don't worry about me, I'll keep up. It's like, bitch, no, you won't. You'll get stuck and I have to keep running back to you. Uh, it was actually one of the hilarious, but totally the right way of doing the, uh, things in games with the, uh, the original Last of Us. Um, Ellie, because I mean, that's really what the game is, right? It's a escort uh, mission or escort game mission. Right, you're escorting Ellie. But she, like, interacts with the environment, but not the enemies. Like, and so it's 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 the right way to do it, especially for the limitations of the time when it came out. Yeah. But there's those hilarious moments where it's like, oh, we're hiding from the zombie and we're going to sneak up on it. And, like, she just walks up to it, like, touches it, and it doesn't do anything because it doesn't see her at all. But it's like, yeah, that's the way to do it because the opposite is the game becomes damn near unplayable because of your companion the AI companion is is simple minded yeah it's I don't know how many times I'll play a game and whether it's an escort mission or whether it's just dealing with stupid AI that it gets so frustrated frustrating and well, hard to complete Resident Evil 4 every time you had to escort Ashley it was like okay go find this thing to just sit in and I'm gonna kill everything around and then I'm gonna come back and get you yeah yeah because that's how you have to play it sometimes, because otherwise your yeah. PC is a stupid idiot. Back in my day, we didn't get DLC and patches and all that kind of stuff. If the game was broken, it was broken. <laughs> that was that. Well, you talk about DLCs, and uh, I've seen a lot of different rants recently about people saying, why can't game companies just release the complete game to you? And, and I, they, they know the reason why, because they always call out that it's for money purposes and things like that. But you look at games where you bought the disc and it was the complete game. There was no DLCs, there was no extra missions, there was no nothing, it was the game. All the glitches included. <laughs> yeah, all oh, the yeah. glitches included. Oh, yeah. 
Well, and, and now it's like, like you, you, you get you the microtransactions. Oh yeah. Well, it's the, the funny thing is the games that do the most the microtransactions are usually made by companies. So EA, for example, um, Activision. You know, they're notorious for those kinds of things and all those paid add-ons. These are also Whoa. the companies that like started arcade companies. Like they, they, that's what they made was arcade games back in the day, where it's and made you know games that ridiculously games difficult are... to just put quarters in, right? Yeah. Like, is it a big surprise that you know these guys have figured out ways of continually getting no. money out of people? Yeah. So close. So close. So close. But also the the way that this was because I, I I had a big problem with when MMOs became a big thing and like World of Warcraft where it's like you got to pay for the full game and then a monthly fee on top of that and I, I had a friend actually all three of us know this friend um, who summarized it very well mainly because he played the hell out of these games and he broke it down by cost per hour of entertainment and he's like movies are so much worse at this because it's a two hour movie. And at the time, two hours was a standard movie, not what we get nowadays where it's like, oh, we're going to just make this a miniseries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, two hours for, you know, 10 bucks or whatever it was at the time. So you're looking like $5 an hour. And he played enough to where I think he was just like, with these games, it's like 15 cents an hour <laughs> or something like that. He's like, it's so much more cost effective for the entertainment value. And I'm like, all right. So it's an interesting way of looking at it that I never thought of. I mean, if you're going to play it that much, yeah. Well, did we want to call it on this episode? Sure. We'll end with Pinchy. Pinchy yeah. and cost-effective entertainment options. We got nowhere in the game. And, and old person rants. Old man rants. And whatever we talk about with Nair and Luffy hair. and. If we remember, remember, if we get to a million subscribers... I, I will shave my Loki, head. I'm not Loki doing the Nair will thing. shave everything. He will shave his hair... I will shave on my his hair, head and his beard. beard. But he'll he'll keep his eyebrows because he's uncertain don't, if those will come back. Don't don't listen to feathers on this. Listen to me. I will shave okay. my head and I will shave my beard. The he rest needs of my a hair stays. Bath. I will not. He needs I, to lose all of his body hair, so he's so he like we if, slip if, him up with butter and like throw him down a water slide and he just slips right off. He goes mm, flying instead of. This streets. is sounding more and more violent and dangerous, and and still ends in chemical burns. So, <laughs> I'll leave that one for feathers. Feathers at five million subscribers. I will Whoa. not shave everything. I know it, for it's not I, it's 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 nair. It's de it's we're gonna whatever <laughs> you just said about buttering up and pushing down a water, water slide, slide into a yeah a vat of acid. Well, the reason why I say like I will not shave everything is because I I don't think I'll I can pull off a bald head, so mm. works for Natalie Portman. Well, it's worked for a lot of people, but you have to have like a nicely shaped head, and Natalie Portman's had a nicely shaped head, and like Millie Bobby Brown <laughs> for Stranger Things, nicely shaped head. So uh, let's just remember here, everyone. This is Feather saying that she has a lumpy, deformed head. I do. Not the rest of us. <laughs> Let's be honest <laughs> that I've I've crashed my bike a lot as a child and I've landed on my head a lot as a child to where I'm sure that you look at the skull and there's like little dents and dings in it. So if you're ever curious as I'm to my, why I'm feathers my... is the way that she is. <laughs> it's because I've crashed and landed on my head a lot. I fully understood what I was talking about. I knew. It's why it's why I'm not as smart. I'm not a smart woman. I am not. I like shrimp. <laughs> who doesn't like shrimp? Other than people who are allergic to shellfish or yeah, can't eat it for what's specific wrong with like, reasons. Liking shrimp. <laughs> Nothing. I'm just saying. Like I like shrimp. I don't work on a shrimp boat, but all right. We should probably call it. All right. Adios, everybody. Bye, y'all.